word computer originally meant human beings trained to make the complicated calculations needed for modern society and science. So back before we had computers like laptops or calculators, we had computers like Annie or Gertrude. One group of these human computers changed how we understand the universe. And these women were called the Harvard computers. Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. Before the word computer meant electronic device that helps us send emails, it was a job title. Computers were human beings paid to make complex calculations for engineers, accountants, and sometimes astronomers. The Harvard Computers started in 1887 with the director of the Harvard Observatory, Edward Charles Pickering. At the time, advances in astrophotography meant that there was far more detailed data on stars than astronomers had time to process. Since male mathematicians were really expensive, it was more economical to hire women. It wasn't long before all of the computers at the Harvard Observatory were women. Analyzing hundreds of thousands of photographic plates as part of projects like cataloging the entire night sky. Star catalogs are important lists of stars that organize celestial objects in terms of their position in the sky, brightness, and a number of other types of data. In fact, many stars are often referred to by their catalog numbers rather than a more common name like the sun or Betelgeuse. Added plus, they don't have to worry about saying Betelgeuse three times. The Harvard computers didn't just crunch the numbers. Many of them became important scientists in their own right. There were over 80 computers during Pickering's life, and even more in the decades after. Since we don't have time to cover everybody, I'd like to highlight a few standouts, like William Ina Fleming. When Edward Charles Pickering became frustrated with his male assistant, he fired him, saying, my housekeeper could do a better job than you. And he was right. The housekeeper Pickering promoted was William Ina, a Scottish immigrant and single mom. Impressed by her keen intellect, Pickering quickly had her join the Harvard computers. Working tirelessly for over three decades, she eventually became Harvard's first female curator of astronomical photographs and the first female American member of the Royal Astronomical Society. She classified thousands of stars with a system she personally devised, and she also discovered the Horsehead Nebula, which is one of the coolest looking things in the galaxy. I mean, look at that thing, it's a space horse. <laughs> Another computer who left an important legacy was Henrietta Swan Leavitt. Henrietta started off as a volunteer computer for the observatory. She later was hired and discovered 2,400 variable brightness stars. Studying these stars, she developed something called the Levitt's Law. It's simple. Well, actually, it's not, but let's dive in anyway. The stars she studied, also known as Cepheids, pulsed in brightness and size over a set period of time. During her many observations of these Cepheids, she made an important discovery. She found that there was a relationship between the time period of which the stars pulsed and their brightness. On average, the brighter the star was, the longer the period of time between when the star was brightest. This became known as Levitt's Law and turned into a crucial tool in astronomy, helping scientists figure out how far stars are away from the Earth. See, if we can figure out how bright a star is, researchers can compare that with how bright it appears to be from Earth. If we know a star is actually really bright, but it appears dim from Earth, we know that it's really far away. Levitt's Law was an incredibly important discovery that helped us discover our place in the Milky Way galaxy and the true size of the universe. Another Harvard computer, Annie Jump Cannon, studied physics and photography before joining the Harvard computers. Annie was a genius at classifying stars and could classify 5,000 stars per month, the fastest of all astronomers at the time. Her system of classifying stars based on temperature is still used by scientists today. It's called the Harvard Spectral Classification System. Despite revolutionizing astronomy, fighting for women's suffrage, and cataloging 350,000 stars, it took over four decades for the Harvard Observatory to offer her a faculty position. The amount of work these computers did was staggering. And even today, citizen scientist volunteers are digitizing and transcribing thousands of their notebooks, alongside those of other early Harvard astronomers, and hundreds of thousands of glass plate photographs. This initiative is called Project Phaedra, 
So if you ever wanted to help bring the work of pioneering scientists into the digital age, you can volunteer yourself. I'd be intimidated because you know their handwriting is gonna be so beautiful. The women of the Harvard computers didn't just help us understand the size of the universe. They made our own world a little bigger by paving the way for women in science. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you wanna watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.